When this man inherited an abandoned trailer from his deceased father, he was confused, the young man hadn't seen his father in over 15 years, so learning about his father's death and receiving the keys to this trailer out of the blue came as a huge surprise, standing in a random forest in front of a trailer he had never seen before, he decided to enter it and see what was inside. Little did he know that the discovery would bring him to tears, the 18-year-old Mark had no idea why he received. This gift from his apparently deceased father, Mark hadn't seen his father or mother in over 15 years, but his father had a very good reason for gifting the trailer, walking around the trailer a couple of times, trying to inspect what was so special about it, Mark found nothing out of the ordinary, the trailer looked worn down, neglected for years, but the true revelation awaited inside. Using the key that came with the letter, Mark opened the door, the trailer door creaked open, and a rush of. The smell of mold and animal feces greeted his nose, everything looked rotten, and Mark couldn't imagine that his father had lived here, however, he was about to make a shocking discovery amidst the pile of rubbish inside opening drawers and pinching his nose due to the unpleasant smell, Mark suddenly heard a loud noise coming from one of the kitchen cabinets, something was definitely inside, and it had noticed Mark's presence, startled. Mark watched the cabinet door moving violently indicating that something was ready to come out although Mark's initial instinct was to run out of the trailer, curiosity took over, he regained his composure and moved towards the cabinet, placing his hand on top of the door, he opened it slowly, revealing a surprising sight, a huge possum came rushing out of the kitchen cabinet, jolting past Mark, the young man, Mark, jumped backward out of initial fright and landed harshly on the ground, however, when he realized that it was just a possum, he laughed out of relief. As he calmed down, Mark noticed something else hidden away in the corner of the cabinet, a small notebook covered in dust, crawling closer, he saw his father's name clearly written on top, intrigued, Mark nervously opened the small notebook, wondering what could be inside, holding something that belonged to his father felt strange, especially since the last time he saw him, he was just a small boy, as Mark flipped through the pages, he discovered that it was his father's diary, detailing his life. However, the diary turned out to be much more than that after a couple of pages, Mark dropped the notebook in shock, picking it up again, he stared at the page in front of him, a letter addressed to him, his father expressed the hope that Mark was doing well and explained that they never wanted to leave his side, however, circumstances beyond their control forced them to do so, as staying would have put Mark's life in grave danger. The writing continued, revealing that his father was glad Mark could grow up in safety, the letter hinted at a hidden truth that Mark was about to learn, confused, Mark turned the page, finding a phone number written in the center, the page ended with a promise to tell Mark the truth, overwhelmed with confusion, Mark wondered about the danger and truth his father mentioned, Mark felt his heart skip a beat as he read the instructions in the diary, the letter urged him to call the provided phone number immediately after reading it, tear-filled eyes stared at. The phone number, and with the notebook in one hand and his phone in the other, Mark stepped out of the trailer as he stood outside, memories flooded back, Mark tried to make sense of why his parents had left him when he was just three years old, the mysterious circumstances of their disappearance had never been fully understood, placed on his grandmother's doorstep, Mark was raised by her. But the unanswered questions about his parents lingered now, with the possibility of finally learning the truth. Mark stood on the precipice of a life-altering revelation, he felt nervous but resolute, with shaky hands, he dialed the number, wondering who would answer the phone, after a few rings, a woman appeared on the other end of the line, before Mark could introduce himself, the woman called him by name, sending a chill down his spine, bewildered, Mark held the phone away, scrutinizing the number, confused and anxious, he asked the woman who she was, but her refusal to reveal her name heightened his, Apprehension, the woman spoke in a hushed tone, as if afraid of being overheard, she quickly got to the point, pleading with Mark to go to a specific spot behind the trailer, there, she described a white garden chair and instructed him to start digging, Mark was taken aback by the woman's detailed knowledge of his surroundings, skeptical and filled with questions, he asked why he should dig and why he should trust her, the woman emphasized the gravity of the situation, insisting that it was crucial for him to do so, Mark was left with a sense of urgency and uncertainty about what he might uncover, the woman persisted, explaining that approximately a foot of soil concealed a crucial object below, 
urgently, she insisted that Mark unearth it and promptly contact her upon discovery, despite the mysterious nature of the request, she disconnected the call, Mark hesitated. Perplexed by the woman's unexplained demands from a stranger, skepticism lingered in his mind as he questioned why he should comply without even knowing her name, this is all so peculiar, Mark muttered to himself, contemplating the odd situation, however, his curiosity overpowered his reservations, armed with a broken table leg, he commenced digging, in a matter of minutes, he uncovered an object beneath the soil, a rectangular, white binder encased in a sealed plastic bag, though initially hesitant. The sight of the mysterious object stirred excitement within Mark, pulling the binder from the ground, Mark noticed its surprisingly good condition due to the airtight seal. Wondering about its contents, he dusted off the exterior and removed the plastic seal, revealing a collection of legal documents, despite the intricate legal language that eluded his understanding, Mark discovered papers dating back years with unfamiliar names, beneath the legal documents lay a stack of bank transfers, at the binder's end, he found a sealed picture for the 18-year-old Mark. The financial jargon seemed like gibberish, especially since he had little interest in economics during high school, however, his attention was captivated by the sealed picture depicting five men with clearly visible faces, intrigued and somewhat suspicious, Mark questioned the significance of these documents and the image, it all felt dubious, and he sought answers, realizing that the woman on the phone might possess more information, motivated by curiosity, Mark decided to comply with the woman's demands and called her back after unearthing the binder, on the other end of the line, the mysterious woman eagerly answered after just one ring, indicating her anticipation, did you find it, she inquired, Mark confirmed that he had unearthed the white binder, in response, he could hear the woman crying with gratitude, she expressed her thanks repeatedly, emphasizing the monumental impact of Mark's discovery, you have no idea what you have just done, this is going to change everything, she exclaimed, hinting at the profound significance of the binder, after a moment of silence, the woman revealed something extraordinary, she took two deep breaths, as if preparing for a momentous revelation, now that we know you found this, I can finally tell you the truth, what I am about to say might come as a complete shock, but try to listen with an open mind, she cautioned, with anticipation building, the woman disclosed news that caught Mark off guard, she claimed to be his mother, my name is Judy Peterson, and you are my son, Mark, she tearfully revealed, Mark was stunned by this revelation, and Judy continued to express her apologies for everything that had transpired. However, the shocking news didn't end there, Judy went on to disclose more information that hit Mark like a ton of bricks, Judy proceeded to share a revelation that further shook Mark's world, contrary to what he believed, his father, Henry, was not dead, he was alive and well, present with Judy, putting the phone on speaker, Judy urged Mark to speak quietly as his father's voice joined the conversation. The older man confirmed his identity as Mark's father, stunned by this unexpected turn of events, Mark listened as Judy explained that both she and Henry had been living under witness protection for over 15 years, the young man struggled to absorb the reality of the situation, a day that began with him knowing nothing about his parents had now unfolded into the revelation that both were alive, how can this be, Mark questioned, wiping tears from his face. Judy recounted that they had been forced into witness protection after unwittingly getting involved in criminal affairs, the binder. Mark had unearthed held the key evidence to dismantle the criminal organization they were entangled with, the documents you now hold are the key evidence to take down that criminal organization once and for all, we placed them in the ground for you to find, Judy revealed, she explained that the illegal documents and transactions within the binder constituted vital evidence including large-scale bank transfers and contracts exposing an extensive fraud scheme, Mark's understanding deepened as Judy emphasized that the sealed picture he now held was the linchpin connecting all the evidence together, the shocking revelations painted a new and complex picture of his parents' lives, leaving Mark grappling with the enormity of the situation, do you see it, Judy questioned Mark, who responded with a positive hum, she went on to explain the significance of the sealed picture, that picture shows you the five heads of the crime organization the police have been trying to find for years, you now have all the proof to identify them. Judy revealed, Mark, still trying to comprehend the situation, 
questioned why they had all this evidence in their possession, his mother delicately explained, we gathered it over the years because we were deeply embedded in their organization, it's not that we had criminal intent ourselves, your father was an accountant, doing bookkeeping for a major corporation, however, he didn't realize that this criminal organization had infiltrated every part of that company, he did their bookkeeping for. Years without realizing it, when we finally found out, we were in too deep to escape their criminal web, so, we started collecting evidence to incriminate the organization, once we had enough, we knew we had to make the toughest choice of our lives. Judy described the difficult decision to leave Mark behind, emphasizing that it was the single hardest thing they ever had to do. The evidence in Mark's hands had put a target on his parents' backs, and as the organization grew more suspicious, they entered witness protection, we didn't want you to grow up in an environment where danger was always lurking around the corner, we didn't know if tomorrow would be the day when those criminals would find us, you were so young, and you deserved to grow up carefree, that's why we gave you to your grandmother, Judy explained, with the revelation complete, Judy urged her son to deliver the entire binder to the police station, where the evidence could be sorted, however, she stressed, but don't go to the police station downtown, anywhere but downtown, adding a note of panic to her instructions, Mark listened quietly, absorbing the weight of the situation and the choices his parents had made to protect him, following his mother's request, Mark initially felt a sense of distrust, however, as Judy continued her story, Mark's skepticism began to wane, he could sense the truth in her words and empathize with the difficult choices his parents had made, tears streamed down his face as he prepared to respond. In a moment of complete silence, Mark expressed his gratitude to his mother for making the tough decision to protect him, he reassured them that he had a good life with his grandmother, however, one question lingered in his mind, why didn't they go to the police back then? His mother let out a sigh of despair before explaining that they had, in fact, gone to the police 15 years ago, they had shared everything they knew, and the police had initially taken it seriously, promising to help, however. The situation took a strange turn, days later, upon returning home, they discovered their house completely trashed, it was evident that someone had been searching every inch of it, the police were the only ones who knew about the evidence against the criminal organization, luckily, we had a personal friend within that precinct who could help us, Judy recounted, however, their friend confirmed a growing fear within the department that the organization had infiltrated even their ranks, faced with. A lack of trust, the friend made the brave decision to go rogue, placing Mark's parents in witness protection without informing anyone within the precinct, the evidence had to be hidden to ensure their safety, we were totally off the grid, but not before hiding the evidence somewhere where nobody would be able to find it, Judy concluded. Shedding light on the complex and perilous circumstances that led them to take such drastic measures, Judy concluded her explanation by emphasizing the crucial reason why mark couldn't go to the downtown police station they couldn't trust which officers there could be relied upon even bringing the evidence to their friend was considered risky due to the uncertainty of who might be watching we don't know who's watching in there judy cautioned mark fully grasped the complexity of the situation and pledged to help take down the individuals involved after hanging up the phone mark wasted no time he quickly got into his car and drove as fast as he could to a police precinct in a neighboring town. Once there, everything unfolded rapidly, Mark walked into the police station, tightly clutching the binder under his arms, requesting the commanding officer, he was directed to a stern-looking man in an interrogation room, Mark shared his story and presented the binder, alongside a few other officers, they inspected the evidence, it took some time for the pieces to come together, but as they did, the shock in the eyes of the officers became apparent, one officer pointed at the picture on top of the documents, revealing, that is the head of police in North County, the realization echoed through the room as the officers recognized the gravity of the situation, they needed to investigate further, instructing Mark to go home and await a phone call, agreeing, Mark eagerly anticipated their response on a Sunday morning, as Mark finished a hearty breakfast with his grandmother, the doorbell rang. His grandmother wondered aloud about the visitor, but Mark had a gut feeling that it would be the police, upon opening the door, a man in uniform greeted him, what is it, officer, Mark asked, cautiously inquiring about any news regarding the investigation, the policeman nodded and confirmed that, 
thanks to Mark's evidence, they had arrested all the involved parties, including the three police officers in North County, the impact of Mark's actions had unraveled a web of corruption. Bringing justice to those who had been shielded by the shadows for far too long, the police officer smiled. Revealing a sense of relief, he turned his bulky body sideways, partially blocking Mark's view of what was behind him, however, Mark could now clearly see a police car parked on the road, out of the car emerged two individuals, patiently waiting for a reunion they had longed for, the officer informed Mark that everything was safe now that the entire organization was behind bars. There was no longer a reason for Mark's parents to remain in witness protection, we exchanged information with their friend over in North County. Which led to their address, are you ready to meet your parents, the officer asked, Mark didn't hesitate for a moment, stepping past the policeman, he walked over to his parents, who were already in full sprint, it was a heartfelt moment as all three of them had tears in their eyes, embracing each other again for the first time in 15 years. The reunion marked the end of a tumultuous journey and the beginning of a new chapter for Mark and his family, now free from the shadows of the past after. Watching this story, what do you think of, then there is an another story similar to this one, let's continue, hi dad, we have a gift for you, Ben joyfully shouted as he entered the living room, followed by his older brother, Enrique, the old man looked confused, responding, what gift is that, you shouldn't spend money on me, Ben insisted you do so much for us, a lifetime won't be enough to pay you back. As he handed his dad an envelope, this is a paid bill for three weeks at a specialized therapy center where conditions of the musculoskeletal system are treated, it's just what you need for your back, you should go have a rest in the fresh mountain air, it will do you some good, Henry chimed in, supporting the idea, Angel's heart fluttered with happiness, realizing that he had raised great sons with his late wife Maria, unfortunately, she didn't live long enough to see the amazing people they had grown up to be. The gray-haired man took the envelope and hugged his sons, grateful for their thoughtfulness, however, the true reason behind the generous gift wasn't just the care for their father, Angel had finally agreed to sell his large, spacious house near the city center, a decision influenced by his son's persuasion, they planned to divide the proceeds among themselves to purchase apartments, though it wouldn't be the same as living in a house, Angel no longer needed so much space, and his sons were in need of their own housing. Moreover, the younger son was getting married soon, and the older one was about to become a father. The gift of the therapy center stay was a gesture of love and appreciation for their father, who had selflessly provided for them throughout the years. The young men accompanied their father to the train station, and the old man embarked on a vacation for the first time in many years. He spent a whole week enjoying the fresh air, medical procedures, and getting to know new people. On the eighth day of his stay, his sons came to visit him. Dad, here's the thing, Ben began, we found a great buyer. For the house, he's not even bargaining, we need to sell the house right now before he changes his mind okay, let's go home then, I'll get packed, Angel answered without hesitation, what are you talking about, you have two more weeks to spend here, we've brought all the documents so you wouldn't have to leave the center, we'll just have to go into town so you can sign a power of attorney for one of us, and we will sell the house ourselves, we'll store your stuff for you in the meantime, and when you get home, we'll find you an apartment together, explained Enrique while the old man wasn't particularly enthusiastic about this idea, he agreed nonetheless, especially since he had prepared the house for sale before he left, ensuring all documents were in order, Angel complied with everything his sons asked and continued with his vacation, two weeks later, he returned home full of energy, and his sons picked him up at the train station, how did it go, did you sell the house, the father asked, yes, everything went great, we sold the house, and Enrique even managed to get himself a house already, Ben shared, that's great, now you can help me find my own place too, the father exclaimed, delighted, we've already found a good option for you, dad, don't worry, I think you'll be fine at the place we found for you, reassured Enrique, trying to ease his father's concerns, half an hour later, the car stopped at an old century house, a building so battered by time that only half of the walls end, the roof remained, Angel was shocked by the sight, no one had lived in this house for at least 15 years, his indignation knew no bounds, why did you bring me here, Angel exclaimed well, you can live here now, do some work on it, Ben said, the money wasn't enough for the three of us, so I'm sorry, you're already old, 
so this place will be enough for you, without waiting for their father to recover, the young man dropped his bag on the ground and left. Angel stood in his tracks, unable to say a word, he never suspected that his kids could be so insidious, the next month went by in a blur, the old man couldn't live in the half-ruined house, so he stayed with friends, moving from one friend to another every couple of days, not wanting to be a burden, Angel managed to sue his sons in an attempt to get back at least part of the money, however, everyone shrugged their shoulders, as he was in his right mind when he signed the power of attorney, making it his own fault in the eyes of the law, lacking them. Funds to hire a good lawyer, Angel was devastated by the betrayal and his hopeless situation, slowly slipping into homeless life as time passed, Angel grew tired of spending his nights at train stations and on park benches, he decided to build a small shelter, choosing a spot near the landfill and putting together a tiny hut for materials he found, while working on his makeshift home, he heard a hoarse voice behind him, who are you, and why are you rummaging around here, the voice asked Angel, turned around to see a homeless man, much like himself, slightly drunk and apparently hostile, unfazed, Angel explained his situation, my name is Angel, I have nowhere else to live, so I'm trying to build a small shelter here, alright, yeah, are you also planning on rummaging in the landfill, this is our territory, we work here, the stranger protested, I don't want to fight, my kids tricked me into selling my home, now I don't have a roof over my head, forced to live out the rest of my life on the street, I simply don't have anywhere to go. Angel calmly explained, sharing his story with the fellow homeless man the homeless man's face changed, and for a moment, it seemed like he might cry, my daughter did the same thing to me a long time ago, she asked me to take out a loan secured by my apartment, claiming that her business was having financial problems, she promised that she would pay out the loan and said that I shouldn't worry, I couldn't leave my daughter in trouble, I had to help her, but she never paid back the money, and I was a victim, I wanted to go live with her, but she said that she didn't have room for me, so, I understand your situation, the homeless man shared, waving his hand before leaving, days passed, each one resembling the other, Angel spent all his time working on the construction of the hut, hoping to finish it before the cold weather set in, early one morning, just before sunrise, Angel woke up to the sound of a car, who's taking out the trash so early in the morning, he thought, wrapped in a warm blanket, he went outside and saw a truck that didn't look like the usual garbage trucks, two strong, tall men were unloading some furniture, sofa, chairs, and an old closet, wow, furniture, and it looks pretty good, I will finally sleep on a soft sofa, Angel said quietly to himself, rubbing his hands excitedly, having waited for the truck to leave, he stepped closer to inspect the furniture, the sofa was old but intact, he tried to drag it to his hut, but it was too heavy, Angel raised the seat, contemplating taking the sofa apart and carrying it over piece by piece, however, what he saw underneath the seat left him shocked, under the seat of the sofa, Angel discovered a young woman who was well-dressed but very pale, rushing to try to bring her to her senses, Angel found that the stranger didn't open her eyes, and it was clear that her breathing was weakening, frightened, the old man started CPR, fortunately having training from his time in the army, he worked on the woman for almost a minute before his efforts gave results. And she started breathing, that's it, breathe, just breathe, Angel whispered to the woman, trying to calm her down, the ambulance arrived a couple of minutes later, providing the woman with professional medical assistance, that evening, Angel allowed himself a glass of cheap whiskey to calm his nerves after the intense experience, the rest of the week went on as usual, with Angel preparing for winter, a month after the incident. He received a sudden visit from an old man in an expensive suit. Thoughts of potential eviction crossed Angel's mind, worrying about demolishing his hut that he had built without any permit, however, he confidently walked towards the stranger, hello, my name is Roberto Gonzalez, the man said, extending his hand to the homeless man, was it you who found a young woman in an old sofa a month ago, yes, it was me, Angel replied cautiously, I am her father, I've been looking for you for a long time, I wanted to thank you, you saved my daughter, Roberto shared, he went on to reveal that he was a judge, presiding over a case of a well-known businessman accused of financial fraud two months ago, the defendant had offered the judge a bribe, but he refused and remained adamant in his decision, after hearing the verdict, the businessmen threatened to take revenge on the judge and kept their word, in line with their order, the judge's daughter was kidnapped, 
pumped up with drugs, and thrown into a landfill to die. If it weren't for Angel, Roberto would have never seen his child again. Grateful, Roberto expressed his gratitude, offering to do anything in his power for Angel, I owe you big time, if there's anything you need, just tell me, I'll do anything in my power, Roberto continued, I don't need anything, thank you, the old man smiled in response, I'm just glad I could help your daughter, surprised, Roberto commented on Angel living in a landfill, asking if he needed food, clothes, or a job, offering to help him find a home and pay for it until he got back on his feet. Angel sighed sadly, admitting that he used to have a home, inviting Roberto into his hut, the old man shared his story, and soon the case against Angel's sons was reopened with the help of the judge's old friend, who became his lawyer. Months later, there was a court hearing, and Angel's sons never even looked at him, however, Angel didn't care whether they felt regret or not, the man won the case, and after the verdict, his sons paid him his share of the proceeds, Angel bought himself a small apartment on the outskirts of the city, found a job, and his life started improving, as for his sons, Angel didn't judge them, he wasn't angry, he hoped that they would never be treated the way they treated him by their own families, the old man occasionally thought about his children, wishing for their well-being, regardless of the past actions, well, that's all for today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.